Welcome back. Country music star James Otto with us on our show today, but he's not the only star in the studio. The star of our family, my niece Madeline, is here, future journalist, so we invited her to come and kind of help host a couple of segments, at least my segments on the show. Good to have you in town, Thank my you. darling. Okay, take it away. Well, today we're doing a craft project with a couple of items many of us may already have at home. It is true. Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from the Grand Rapids Press and CraftSanity.com is here to show some simple ways to bleach and dye fabric. Yes. Good to have you back. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we're going to do um, some projects with things you can find around the house. Okay, we always like those. Start out with just your Cascade dishwasher detergent. Mm -hmm. Comes in a gel form, just like this. So it looks kind of like uh, slime. And what you can do here, there's bleach in it. You want to make sure that you do this with a product that has bleach in it. If you don't have bleach, then you're, it's you're not, not going to work. You're not going to do it. Okay. It's not going to work. Um, and here's the things that, you, as you can, you can see, what we're going for here. This is like little dots. Um, just you can draw things you, so on So you're going to apply that product apply to it. the fabric. Yes. And here, a little sign if you want to. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Madeline, you hold that for your mother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do here is you just, I used to use these little, these little um, sponge brushes here. Yep. And you just dab it on. You've made like a little form, a little I, And what I use, actually, I'm making a, I made a freezer pen, uh, Freezer paper stencil and just ironed it on. Okay. Okay. And you can dot this without a stencil, but this is what. It's neat and tidy now. Yeah, you can just kind of go like this. And then what I, you, the parts I punched out, I ironed on here. So I can go around and those will maintain the color while I bleach around. Got it. Okay. So what you do, and um, we don't have enough time to soak this, but yeah. basically what you do, you let this sit for about 15, 20 minutes. Don't walk away from it because it could eat through because oh. it's bleach. Oh, so right. you want to make sure that you still have fabric left. And then what you do is wash off the detergent and soak it in a mixture, one part vinegar to three parts water. Okay. Do that for 15 minutes. And then you can wash your fabric and you're good to go using it in a quilting project or whatever else you choose to do. So you could make little quilt squares. You can and make put little all quilt that squares. Stuff. Look at how adorable yeah. that is. And the black turns to brown in that center part. Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Very cute. So, okay, moving on. To you the could Sharpie. take this to your USC dorm room and have the, you know, or your apartment and I have think all your girlfriends. My roommate would like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's another project your roommate might like too. Sharpies. They're on okay. sale now with the back to school sales. That's right. Um, what you do is you just take Sharpie. Um, and a piece of muslin mm -hmm. and just make some designs, you know, however you want. Yep, squiggles. Uh, you can do this with the kids. I've done some to kind of set us up here. Hold those up, Mad Mess. And so what you do, this is just rubbing alcohol from the drugstore. Okay. And you put it in a spray bottle. Yep. And then what you do, this is where the fun part comes in. <laughs> you just spray this. Spray the uh, rubbing alcohol on here, and as you can see, it bleeds a little. It bit. starts to bleed, and it, when you think, you know, you've seen how it's going to go, it takes a little bit. Yes. But you let these dry, so the alcohol evaporates right off. And as you can see, Catherine, if you want to help me hold this up. Oh, because this is a clothesline. These line. are these are all examples of what happens, and this is all Sharpie markers. I did these with my kids. Isn't and that all, cute? And then what will you do with these squares? Well, Both these were, these are kind of like little, these could be like used as little peace flags. We're going to hang it up in their room. They like to have like their work visible Display to them. Displayed yeah. prominently. I like it. Yeah, and this is a big one here. Mm. You can do bigger ones. Yep. Hold so. that other one up. And those are actually <clears throat> tie-dyed. And this is moving on to our column, uh, my Sunday column in the Grampets Press. Okay, the hold that up, tie-dyed pieces Mama. here uh, were um, made um, by um, Gail. And I'm going to pronounce her name right here, <laughs> Mir Gorodsky. And um, she is a really talented artist here in Grand Rapids who dyes her own fabric. And this is really elementary. She was showing me some tie dyeing techniques. The stuff she does is just amazing. As you can see in the photo, those are some of her fabrics that she's dyed. So she does huge chunks huge of Huge pieces. Fat. And she um, sends this stuff to um, qu a quilt artists, uh, art quilters all over the country. So a right, very talented woman in our midst here in Grand Rapids. Or you can make them on a smaller scale. Tie dyeing is such a fun thing to oh, do with your so kids. Oh, it's so fun. And you can cut these up and put them in quilts or make yourself a bandana or however you want to do it. But these are some things you can start right in your home. All right. Check it out. The columns in the Grand Rapids Press or CraftSanity.com. You can find more information at WZZM13.com. Click on Take 5 links. Well, who doesn't love fresh flowers? When we come back, flower design expert Jay Schwanke joins us right here in the studio. Stay with us, please. More colorful displays.